Hello, hello, hello. What's up, Dream Team? So I'm back with another video. Thank you for everyone who watched my last video, um, who participated in the question um, in which I asked you guys, what specialty do you think I applied to? Um, I will talk about that a little bit later on in the video, but right now, um, just a breakdown of the video today, I'm going to give you one of the crazy things that happened to me um, during the interview cycle. I made sure too. It depends on the time. <laughs> Um, let me see what's the crazy thing that happened. So one of the craziest, well, not the craziest thing that happened to me, but so I had some interview days where I had kids at home with me. And for the most part, you know, I was at home by myself during interview days because the kids were at school. Um, but this particular day, I think that it might've been like a break or something or around some type of school break. So the kids were at home with me and it was just us. And then my son had to kind of watch my two year old while I <laughs> did the interview. So you can imagine how that was, um, listening to it. But a particular day, um, they were cooking. Mm -hmm. They were cooking. And mind you, I have a 14 year old and a two year old. So they were cooking and, um, the fire alarm went off or not the fire alarm, but the smoke detector went off and it was so loud and crazy. And by this time I was at the tail end of this particular interview with this person and it was the program director. And we were talking and talking next thing you know, uh, 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 uh. I was like, Oh my God. I was like, this is so embarrassing. I'm sorry. She was like, do you need to check that? Like that's the smoke detector. I'm like, it's okay. I'm like, oh, it's okay. But, um, it was a good way for me to show that I know how to handle stuff under pressure, I guess, because um, I was like, I could have been like so panicky, so frustrated, so mad when it was going off. But I was like, it's okay. And this, this is happening and I'm in an interview and it's all right. Um, so that was a funny thing that happened to me, um, during my interview. Um, I did have something that happened to me during another interview at a different program, um, that I don't know if it really happened to me or just kind of transpired. So I think one of the things that you, that a person of color does not want to hear in a professional setting is that they are articulate. And initially I didn't, you know, think anything of it until I kind of broke down my interview experience with some of my, my, my colleagues and they were like, mm. but I was on this particular interview and I was the only minority woman, um, there and all of my interviewers were non-minority people. And, um, one, <laughs> one of the interviewers was like, I'm so sorry that your interview is so white. That's what she said. Um, don't get the wrong impression of us. We are not like a completely white program. We have diversity. Like we really have diversity. She was like, I have a black husband. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and, um, then the next interviewer was an older white gentleman. And, you know, he was very nice, like very, very nice and very complimenting of me and my accomplishments. And he kept going on and on about how articulate I was. And, um, and I was just like, you know, at the time, of course, I'm, like, okay, wow, he's giving me all these compliments, all this kind of stuff. He's like, how articulate I was and how the black community in their area would, really needs me and I would really do great service to their community. <laughs> and um, initially, like I said, I was like, okay, cool, you know, they think I'm an asset and all this kind of stuff. And then as I, you know, like when you talk to your friends and stuff like that, you kind of like, oh, this happened to my interview. And every single one of my friends who I told about the whole articulate comment was like, ooh, Mm, mm, I don't like that. I don't like that. That's a microaggression or this, that, and other. I mean, for me, like I said, initially, I didn't think anything of it until I kind of put all the pieces together from that particular interview in itself with that person. And I did not want to be objectified in that sense. And I, and I also was like articulate. So how did you expect me to sound? I have a bachelor's. I have a master's. I'm in medical school. I work professionally in corporate America and other jobs, as you can see, because you said you're just so enamored by my um, resume. So how did you expect me to sound? So maybe the word articulate was not the right word he meant to say. Maybe it was another word. But yeah, that word, when I kind of thought about it, I was like, so like, did you want me to talk to you in the interview? Like I talked to my friend, what's up, shawty? Like, what? What we doing tonight? Like, <laughs> how did you want me to, to talk in an interview where I'm trying to kind of put my best foot forward in a, a job, you know? So that was kind of interesting. Um, and I, I can't say I had too many of those experiences. I will say... In medicine in general, African Americans are only like 5% of the physician population. So we are minute, we're small. So most of my interactions will be with non-minority people. So I'm, I, that's something I have to be comfortable with. That's something that is a part of life in general. So um, you just have to make sure that you're somewhere where you are, your culture is not um, 
glamorize or not glamorize, but fetishize, I guess you would say. Um, and that you are, you know, you're in a place where you're comfortable and you feel like you can be yourself. I'm sitting here saying that my interview experiences, I felt like, oh my God, I, I can't be myself in these places. I'm just making a general statement. And so now I'm gonna get down to the juice because I ain't trying to have this video too long for you guys. Um, uh, but drum roll please, what specialty did I apply to? Um, so this is a trick question. So y'all been watching me. Y'all know I like a few different things. You know, I, you know what I, I, I do have a video that I talked about what I like and what I don't like. And I think I'll insert it somewhere in here. Um, as far as when I did my third year clerkships, but so this is kind of like a long way to answer. So first of all, I got to tell y'all the backstory. So when I was a little kid, I always knew I wanted to be a doctor. You know, that was in my head. But of course, I always, I kind of, I entertained other ideas too. I just wasn't that child to say, oh, I'm going to be a doctor and I'm going to be nothing else. Like I explored other things. Um, but when I was a little kid and I don't know if people remember this show, but, um, on the channel TLC, a show used to come on called baby story. I was so fascinated with this and I was like 11, 10 and it was just the, the fascination of seeing these women pregnant, going to the hospital, delivering the baby, coming home and all this kind of stuff. And I will say the TLC show didn't like go in glory detail of the whole delivery process. Like it didn't, it just showed them going to the hospital next clip they're done you know the baby's born um and so that kind of always put the ob in my head and i was like oh you know i would love to do that and then in the process of being a nutritional student i have been able to go into different um specialties working um i worked in cardiology for two years like actually working i paid cardiology for two years i worked in psychiatry for a short period of time because yeah, y'all don't want to know about that experience. And it was more so the physician <laughs> and not the um, specialty. But I, the, I still like psychiatry because of that. And then family medicine, I shadowed in family medicine for, whoa, oh my God, years and years and years I've shadowed in family medicine. Um, and then what other specialties have I had exposure to? Um, those are my only exposure, to, specialties I've had exposure to outside of um, school. So I had those exposures before medical school. And then when I got into medical school, I was kind of headstrong on where I, where I wanted to go. I knew it was primary care. I knew I did not want to really specialize. So that was my thing. And then I got to third year clerkships and was like, oh my God, I'm good here. I'm good here. And I knew what I didn't like. I didn't like surgery. And I, like I said, there's a video telling you why I didn't like surgery. Internal medicine for me, I'm not really a hospital person. So I was like, I don't, I don't want to be here all day. Like, I got kids at home. Like, I love medicine. And I, this is my career, but I want to be, I like outpatient. I like rapport. I like continuity of care, getting to know you, you know, talking to you, um, and hopefully seeing you when you're not, you know, in the hospital bed. And I like kids, but I don't want to do beads. Like, mm, my little two-year-old kind of like, mm, 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 that out for me. So, um, yeah. And that kind of gets into what I applied to. So, so, so. So, so, so I apply to, I'll tell you in the next video. <laughs> Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you like this video. Give it a big thumbs up if you are looking forward to hearing what specialty I apply to in the next video. All right, Drew team. I appreciate you guys for <laughs> hanging on for the video and I'll tell you um, next time what I apply to.